Hello, my name is Joanna White and I'm Collections and Information Developer for the British Film Institute and it's a pleasure to be speaking to you today. The BFI is the lead body for film in the UK. It runs the UK's National Archive for Moving Image, which includes film and television collections. I work in the Data and Digital Preservation Department, which runs many automation processes for the preservation of these collections. Today I will discuss one of our latest project launches, the preservation of three petabytes of legacy DPX film scans. This project identified one primary driver, digital preservation using a lossless, open, standard space format that is increasingly adopted by public archives. Raw Cooked was chosen to encode the DPX sequences to losslessly compressed FFE1 video codec in the Matroska container. This codec offers amazing features for audiovisual preservation, including frame slices that improve multi-threading playback performance and slice CRCs or cyclic redundancy checks that make it possible for a decoder to detect bitstream errors. Both FFE1 and Matroska are proven, open and standards-based solutions. Raw Cooked currently encodes to FFE1 using open source FFmpeg program and libraries, while verification and reversibility processes are produced by Media Area. Media Area is led by Duro Martinez. It's a consortium of talented developers and archivists producing audiovisual tools with preservation interests at their core. From these tools, we also use MediaConch for standards conformance checking and MediaInfo to view and interrogate file metadata. The majority of these DPX sequences are currently stored on data tape and an external supplier extracts them to a storage device, around 400 sequences at a time. They're sourced from myriad suppliers using variable scanners and storage technologies across many separate projects and over many years. As we have thousands of sequences to process, it was essential that Bash shell scripts were developed to automate the use of these open source tools. The first two were written by department head Stephen McConaughey, and I contributed two more, despite having no formal training as a developer. Through exposure to open source audiovisual preservation communities and their culture of workflow sharing and support, we've been empowered to create a suite of microservices that we continue to maintain and develop as this project evolves. I'll briefly introduce you to these scripts now. pre raw Cooked assesses the new batch of DPX sequences suitability for raw cooked encoding using a media conch conformance policy. It loads the first DPX of each sequence and compares it to this policy, checking that the DPX sequence complies with our raw cooked license and can proceed to encoding. It also generates metadata and checksum files which are placed in the DPX sequence folder and are embedded into the Matroska container for long-term storage. Raw Cooked script is the first of the automated script that drives the raw cooked encoding. To ensure continual processing of sequences, this script is run 24-7 from a Linux virtual machine using a crontab scheduler. It selects 20 DPX sequences, checks for items already being processed, then passes the rest through to GNU Parallel, which runs five concurrent raw cooked encodings. When these 20 are completed, the cron scheduler restarts the process all over again. For each raw cooked encoding, the script also generates a log file, which is critical to the next stage. Post raw cook is the second automated script and assesses the FFE1 file and logs to ensure the preservation process has been successful. It runs once every eight hours. First, the FFE1 is compared to a media conch policy, which checks for frame rates of 24, bit rates above 300 megabits a second, FFE1 slices of 16 or above, FFE1 codec has error detection, is lossless, and has intra frame settings. A file that passes this media conch policy may not necessarily pass through to our long term preservation. A second stage assesses the logs generated by Raw Cooked, and if error messages reveal a reversibility fault, then the FFE1 files are failed, deleted, and the sequences will be requeued for encoding. The final script is run just once when all DPX sequences from the storage device have completed and forms part of a cleanup process. It checks for evidence that each sequence's FFE1 file has successfully been ingested into our digital preservation infrastructure by running a comparison of the folder name against ingest logs. In addition to these checks, I regularly make reversibility checks by demuxing an FFV1 back to its original DPX state before running checks and comparisons with the original source DPX to ensure they're identical, and they always are. This is time consuming, so more frequently I will play FFV1 files in VLC and take a look at the metadata and media info. 
If I find something unusual, I immediately amend the FFE1 media conch policy to incorporate this check across all future encodings. The scale and diversity of the BFI's legacy DPX collection has presented us with some interesting hurdles to overcome. We've seen extreme variations in the sequences themselves that have caused issues with FFmpeg and raw cooked, resulting in unusual FFE1 encodings. This has led to a sustained period of product testing and has called for flexibility and evolution of our scripts and continues to contribute to raw cooked software development. All of these can be mapped on raw cooked's GitHub issue tracker as everything about this software is open and accessible. So that's a swift overview. We're currently one sixth of the way through this project and have over 2,000 video files ingested into the digital preservation infrastructure. This includes Socialism on Film from the Educational and Television Films collection, shown here. Many of these items have colourful optical audio tracks, making them extra beautiful to look at, while revealing some of the mechanics of the film technology for the first time. Speaking from my own perspective as a former TV news camera person, my career engagement with audiovisual software and hardware has been trained over successive decades to accept vendor-supplied tools, expensive support, and the inevitable inbuilt format obsolescence. Thankfully, with open and standard space preservation formats like FFE1 and Matroska, and software like Raw Cooked, this no longer needs to be the case. The development of our open source microservice art architecture has allowed us to custom build efficient and responsive workflows that adapt as we need them to, and provides us with great insight into open source AV tools and software development. We predict that using Raw Cooked for this project will save us a total of 1,600 terabytes of storage space. By reducing the content storage footprint by more than half, we ease the burden of future tape migrations. We are already enjoying reduced network impact. And as you can see, our curatorial teams now have the opportunity to review over 200 hours of ungraded original film scans. Our projected savings will be in the region of £45,000 for this project alone. In addition, we are using these findings to undertake a review of our film scan specifications, and we'll use these findings to better inform our suppliers of safe parameters for successful raw cooked encoding. These open source tools are not expensive to implement, but open source shouldn't be thought of as free source. Users of these tools need to work together to establish financial support for their long-term sustainability. To that end, the BFI is currently investigating sponsorship of feature developments necessary to our collections. Raw Cooked, FFE1 and Matroska offer unique and exciting solutions for long-term audiovisual preservation, providing much needed format stability and financial savings. We'd like to thank Jerome Martinez for his support during our testing phase and to thank the wider community whose blogs, technical guides and cheat sheets continue to aid us in the creation and maintenance of our workflows. If you'd like to know more about Raw Cooked, our open source workflows or the BFI, then please take a look at the links below. Thank you.